Hey guys, welcome back and we are with the fire combine. We were cutting corn and everything was going perfectly well. Lovely moisture content, I think it was 18% moisture. Especially for this year, it was absolutely flying through the combine. I think I was pushing the combine on a little bit faster than I should have. Um, unfortunately, we heard a big bang, which is never good in a combine of this age and this vintage. So yes, we heard a big bang and then we heard a lot of scraping noises and a lot of vibrations throughout the whole machine. So straight away we shut down the machine, got out, checked it, and uh, yeah, it's not looking too good for the poor old combine. In this video we're going to diagnose what the big bang was. Can we fix it? I don't know. So this might be the last video for the poor old Dice Fire, Fire Combine, or else we will be able to fix it and we will cut on, and we will cut hopefully the rest of this year's crop and next year's crop as well. And yeah, let's see if we can keep the poor old combine going. While cutting the winter wheat, I suddenly felt something was wrong. Wait, hang on. Is there something vibrating? Okay, here we are at the back of the combine and this is where the problem is. Here we are inside the combine. You can see the crack line from all up here, all the way down. There it is at the very bottom, just down here. So, I'm not really sure how to fix this. Why did it fail? I have absolutely no idea why it failed. But my guess is because in the previous video I showed this bearing over here had failed and all of this grain pan here had actually fallen down sideways. I think I actually put pressure onto this and probably there was a hairline crack already in it. And then as we put more load onto it, we're cutting grain. The hairline crack does split the whole way up and eventually the whole thing failed. Okay, so looking at either side, this is a good side. So you can see there's a gap between here and this in here. So there's what? Distance of what two fingers? The same down here, there's a gap of about two fingers. And on the damaged side, you can see there's literally no gap here and no gap down here. But there is metal out here, so if we bring that metal back and then seam weld it on that split line, it'll actually shove this panel back or this panel here forward and that will give us the correct gap again. Why do we have to, to weld it and why does it have to be lifted back up and why is it necessary? So there's a sieve that fits in here and there's a second sieve that fits in here and they both have to rest inside here and obviously this one up here. So it is out by that much. It's currently sitting down by and the same down here. It's way too low. So we're going to try and lift it, weld it, seam weld it on the outside might have to do a little bit of welding in here maybe just get a brace just this way here maybe this one here um i kind of want to stay away from this one up here because this one this panel here has to move so it'll actually be moving inside here and then back out again so i want to stay away from that but i might have to just even maybe a seam weld on top of that but, uh, i'm not really sure how to fix this obviously like the proper way is to take the whole thing out but um Ain't nobody got time for that! We might have to do it, but I'm going to try to avoid taking it out just for the moment. See if there's a different way of doing it. Not really sure what to do, it's incredibly difficult. So yeah, yeah. a lot of work. Okay, so not really knowing what to do, I decided just to dive straight into the project. And we cut a big panel out. So there's the panel. We gotta take this out. So that's the panel now removed. This is how the panel looked with all the metal folded in. So now after a lot of heat and some hammering, we managed to, this was curved around, so we managed to straighten this back out. We've done the same down there and it's coming around. So you can see where it's separated. So what we're going to do is, uh, it's also, it's both fallen down and separated. So what we'll have to do is probably move this on a little bit more to bring up that line to widen it. Then get something in here, probably on that nut there lift it up so you can see how much we have to lift it up by try to maybe weld it and then i'm going to plate it afterwards so i think the plate will hold it together um basically this isn't documented before so i have no idea what we're doing we're just going to go for it and hopefully if i have it all welded up i might have to do some welding from the inside i really don't want to do that i want to stay out here because it's much easier to weld and then at the very end just seam weld it all the way back around again well, it's the only way I can figure out how to do it. You got any better ideas? Here's what I've done so far. So we've straightened all of this as best I can. 
and now we're going to clean up the uh, paint here we're just going to shine it all up shine up this side here as well and then get ready for welding that's it so far okay and that's how it looks so far yes I'm not the most prettiest of welders but it is welded and it is closing up the gap so what we did was we started at the bottom and just welded that and then just took the weight off it and then try to make these two collapse back into each other and spot weld them and then slowly uh, close up the seam all the way up it's not gonna be pretty and it is all like hit and dinted so like it's not gonna be perfect but anyway, we've welded this bit here up this bit here up now we're seam welding it all the way up and then afterwards it's gonna be plated on anyway so you won't see any of that so that's how it's looking so far kind of happy with the job kind of not happy with the job this is probably the easiest way of doing it otherwise we'd have to take the whole unit out the back of the combine and that's a massive job so this is uh, the best solution I can come up with so we're going to put a big plate here weld that in and then that'll be the strength back into the combine and then obviously close up our gap the whole way around and this is how it looks on the inside so you can see there's still a gap up here and this here still has to be welded from here all the way down it's, it's looking good so uh, making progress but the more I look at it, I think it was a hairline crack in it. You can see that's quite an old break just there. It doesn't look like it's quite that new. So it probably was a hairline crack in it. And it was probably just being held probably like somewhere here at the top and here at the bottom. And it was already broken. And as we use the machine and this rocks forward and backwards, it basically just opened up and broke. Right, let's get back to welding. Okay, and that's it now plated up and welded in. And the same done from inside the combine, it's all welded up, seam welded all the way up, and then the plate is welded on top. Okay, all welded up, and we are done. Booyah! Okay, there's some primer onto it, and then the last job is just to get some paint. Now with that minor breakdown, time to get back cutting. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you later.